How's it going everybody? My name is Warner Fields with Fields of Profit. I'm a full-time seven-figure Amazon seller and in today's video we're going to be going back to an event that I did in person back here not too long ago where I hosted an in-person event and basically I had some volunteers sit up in front of the room and do what's called hot seat where I kind of grilled them on where their business is at and where they should go for the future and this interview is honestly a really interesting one because the guy I was able to talk to his name is Dan and he's done over three million dollars in sales on Amazon doing a lot of retail arbitrage though way back as early as 2014 so he's one of the old heads of selling on Amazon and he was there to kind of of just trying to figure out how to free himself from the grind of driving around from store to store and just trying to transition his business into online. So if that's you, this conversation is going to be super useful, but we both definitely dropped some nuggets for all you beginners and advanced sellers out there. Before we jump into today's video, if you guys want even more free resources to learn how to sell on Amazon, link directly below me is going to be our completely free Amazon seller discord community. There's over 26,000 people in there sharing a ton of free information. Would love to see you in there, but let's go ahead and jump into the video. Glad to have you here today, Dan. I've been seeing your stuff on on TikTok, and yeah, so, yeah you're giving me. I was mentioning earlier, you're giving me a challenge. Yeah, for we got the flow the best game, hair game in, yeah, in the Amazon yeah. space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, how much have you sold in lifetime Amazon sales? You probably, you probably um, might be above me. Well, I started September 2014. Yeah. First couple of years were not a lot, but then I did hit my stride for a while. So I probably sold somewhere over three million. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats. Yeah. I'm not there yet. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so we talked about it a little bit earlier, like what kind of changed? I think it's interesting. I, I like why you kind of went from doing those big numbers and then kind of how, why did it fall off? Yeah, so I started out when I was in film school. Like it's kind of, I'll, I'll share just a little bit. Like I started by flipping light bulbs. <laughs> That's risky. <laughs> yeah, it is a risky category, which is why it's I was profit, doing though. it and other people weren't. So, but like yeah, a yeah. state of Illinois, they'll subsidize light bulbs. A $20 package will sell for like five bucks at Home Depot. Oh. So I was flipping those and it's not that great of a flip anymore. So, but you can check it out if you want. <laughs> but uh, I was in film school. That's how I paid for film school. And then I got out and then the light bulbs weren't selling anymore, you know? Yeah. And then I got a mentor and I was still trying to pursue acting and all that and basically I got myself in a really tough financial situation where it was like do or die and I I made it so I eventually I was I got up to like 150k a month in sales mm -hmm. and then I did that for a while and then I got really burnt out because I wasn't doing acting and I also didn't have like sustainable systems mm -hmm. in place I was telling those guys earlier it was like a I felt like a highly paid assassin you know like, <laughs> like I'd go into stores and I would just clean them out but like it was just me my mostly and then mm -hmm. you know maybe I had a few people working for me at different times but couldn't really figure out how to like pursue what I was really wanted to do and have this like sustainable business yeah, yeah. so yeah. I think that's super cool that you've like kind of managed that yeah so I guess that's kind of the pain point for you right now you're trying to figure out how to not touch so many things and focus on what you love to do right yeah yeah, yeah like yeah. long-term vision you know like let me ask you real quick it's always like are you planning on doing arbitrage for like the near future or like what's your vision with this business yeah I think arbitrage will be around for I mean it's going to be around forever in some form with Amazon like I think I'm going to be investing a little bit into growing the wholesale business this year yeah. just so I can have diversified sources like you know if you know you got to be prepared for that kind of risk especially when you're building a decent sized business like you don't want to be all in on like sourcing from three websites and that's right. it right but I think arbitrage will be around for a long time and a lot of like I mentioned earlier a lot of the best Amazon sellers right now are doing arbitrage on top of their other stuff because right. there's so much opportunity right now but yeah investing in the wholesale I've, I've thought about doing like a private label kind of thing just to have like a sellable asset. That's kind of the, the main benefit to me of doing private label. But yeah, I, th I think arbitrage will be around. Excited to continue to grow that. Yeah, I'm just asking for my own like long, long term vision. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah like uh, I had this question come up earlier. I was thinking over there, like when you were just doing OA by yourself, the sourcing. Mm -hmm. Were you able to sustain like a full time income off of that before you hired your first virtual assistant or? Uh, yeah, I would have been in college also at the same time. So, you know, even then I was probably spending three, four hours a day, but yeah. it was less, you know, less money per hour, three, four hours a day. I was doing Ashley, do you remember how much I was doing? 25, 25, 30, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I think. <laughs> oh. um, I think, yeah, I was doing about 25, 30 fairly easily. And then like up on the chart, like by the time I got to the, you know, December during while I was still in school, I was not using virtual assistants really that much. A lot of the virtual assistant was for like managing social media brand, that kind right. of thing. I, I think it'd be very possible to do 50, like really fairly easily without a virtual assistant to get beyond 50,000 a month you're going to be, it's just a good decision to have virtual assistants, right. but you, you can definitely make a full-time income without employees. So like, like what, like uh, as 
far as is you source. So like when I tell people for our retail arbitrage, yep. you should be able to spend five thousand dollars a day. Mm -hmm. You know, between five and ten when you're doing RA. Like what was a good number for you to spend when you were just working by yourself, and like how many leads did that kind of equate to? Yeah, yeah, that's a while ago. I don't, <laughs> I don't know about like specific numbers for leads. My daily spend goal last year for most of the year was five hundred bucks a day. Good. Um, so you're spending fifteen. I upped it to like a thousand towards the end of the year where I started doing like fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month. December, I just was like, all right, I've got money, time to, <laughs> time to go all at it. Yeah, I don't remember how many leads per day that would have been. You know, some days you could spend three thousand dollars on one lead. The next day you're going right. to spend a hundred dollars on five different leads, right? Yeah, yeah. I just asked because that was one thing I always struggled with. Oh, it was just like felt like forever sorting through a bunch yeah. of stuff, yeah. and then so it was really helpful to actually hear you explain like a good VA will be able to find four solid yeah, leads yeah, in a day. Yeah. 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 So, what's the biggest thing that you think you need to develop to be able to get to where you're trying to be? Like the remote kind of. I think a clear vision is very helpful, okay. and so I'm working on that. That's why you just got a haircut. Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I mean, I'm. So that's a big deal and then just maintaining consistency mm -hmm. so maybe i can ask you about that it's like what do you do to to maintain that consistency because you're like you said you're only maybe doing buying for like two or three hours mm -hmm. a day but you are doing that consistently yeah. day so are you yeah. doing that five days a week seven days like what keeps you in that schedule yeah i was doing it seven days a week like as of last month i'm trying to give myself saturdays off of work so just yeah. for my own sanity like yeah i mean it's it's a lot of work at start at the front do right? you have like a standard operating procedure that you give the people working for you like how do you kind of train them yeah we have the like we have all the videos and like here's a step-by-step -step on how i want you to do like tactical arbitrage coupon scans and here's how we do reverse searches and honestly a lot of it's just my youtube videos there's a couple modules from the course they have access to but all that combines just to have like a baseline of knowledge and then as, as i mentioned we'll like diagnose if they have certain problems just there's just a million different things to look at when you're mm. sourcing as all of us know like even if you found 10 leads you might decide an hour later i only want nine of those <laughs> yeah. yeah so like let's say you spend a dollar today a, given like the amount of lead time for the like walmart.com mm -hmm. to ship that to your prep center plus it used to be i started in september 2014 you could send something into amazon and be processed in a week <laughs> i imagine 2014 was and kind of the wild west it's, it's not like that anymore <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah so like you spend a dollar today like yeah. when do you expect to be able to eight, eight weeks is my conservative estimate okay so I, I expect to turn my money over six times in a year um, mm. And if you implement FBM, that kind of stuff, like if I wanted to like go all out and optimize my Amazon dollars, I would be doing a lot of FBM because you're gonna get way more inventory or right. inventory turns. And That's cool that you turns. said that. I mean, like, I don't think most people think about that, that being able to turn your money over six times. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And you know, we can say like, oh, I'm gonna buy this and I'm gonna sell it in a month, but then you have a couple of weeks till Amazon gives your money back and all that kind of stuff. So just to be conservative, I generally estimate like six to eight turns of your money. You have to think about every time you do that, you're growing it at 35%. So right. by the end, even at six turns like it, the math is crazy there yeah no that's really cool that yeah you yeah figured that out yeah so what's one like kind of specific actionable step that you're kind of struggling with that we can get you scaled mm. with what are you using to source right now if you're are you I trying do, uh, away at all no that's kind of my sticking point is mm -hmm. i i did not like sitting in front of the computer yeah okay um so i guess what would be good would be to have like what you showed with keep i'd never done that before with the product uh variation yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so just like a consistent like that's what i do with ra and like that type of thing like all right i'm gonna go out how much can i spend within an hour mm -hmm. you know and so like i guess having a system where i know like all right maybe i'm half an hour into this but i know if i stick it out for an hour i, mm -hmm. I probably should be able to find something like yeah yeah I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like, yeah, I just, I need like knowing that I will be able to find something with OA. Yeah, so since you have capital, I would, I'm not, I'm not plugging myself, like buy whatever you want. If I was in your shoes, I would buy a course to show me how to do it. Yeah. Just because you have the money to shortcut the time. Right. You'll know, find one that works for you or just get really into YouTube. Because at the end of the day, we can hire a virtual assistant to source for us. But if we don't know how to do it, like at a high level, we're not going to know what they're doing wrong. And you had a little bit of trouble with that in the past. Like, you know what a good item looks like with doing right. that much RA. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've done some OA. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I did want to ask you this as well. So you're, you said your average sale price is around like $30. Yeah. Have you thought about like basically splitting off part of your business or, or starting a new part of your business that goes after like higher dollar amounts? Like, or how do you approach, okay, we're gonna do OA, but maybe we're gonna hire people to do wholesale, mm -hmm. like while sustaining the business you already had, you know, like how do you think about that? Yeah, that's a good question. In terms of not like cannibalizing the business, we have like a database of other leads that our team has found. So we're not like double doing work in that case. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm losing my train. What was your question? My question is like, how do you sustain the business? Like, like I do RA. Yep. Mike does RA. How do you, or have you put any thought into how do you continue to make money that way? 
yep. and add on to it. Yeah, you know? so as you do that, like replenishables are gonna be a big thing. You've, you've The light bulbs you were buying over and over again. Yeah. So you're gonna have, you know, of the items you buy, there's gonna be, you know, maybe 30% of them you just lose money on. Maybe 50% of them you sell them, they're great, but they're not good to buy again. And then 20% of the items you're gonna be like, oh, I sold that, oh, I can buy it again and again and again. So that's gonna be a very nice like baseline that's gonna grow like very slowly. Right. And those tend to also be a little bit lower ROI just because the home runs are not gonna sit there forever. So build your business there. And then you can use that money to invest in those new products that you're wanting to experiment with. Um, but at the end of the day, you always have those replenishables to fall back on. They'll fall, they'll fall off after three months, six months, a year, right. whatever. But that's going to be a nice baseline. And that's how you kind of scale is building your baseline and then using that money to go into the riskier stuff where it's like, oh, I lost money on that. But this was 150% ROI, so yeah. it's fine. That's cool. Yeah, I'm sure I'll hit you up in the DMs with more <laughs> questions. Yeah, but yeah, for I don't sure. I want to give some other people the chance. Yeah, so just play around with like a sourcing method that you like. Give a week to reverse, give a week to TA. Like you, you've got the capital invest in whatever yeah. strategies you want to try out. Find one you like best. And then once you have a little bit of a mastery of it, just get a VA to do that for you. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you, man. Cool. Glad yeah. to have you here, Dan. Pleasure.